Hi everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Fatima Jafarqali. I am super duper excited to be here and thank you so much for uh, attending my talk. I am thrilled to be included in uh, the CPP North and Again, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, so, yeah, I wasn't sure. I mean, this is definitely not C++, I can tell you that. And I wasn't sure, like, if you guys are going to like it or not. But it's a new language. I mean, if you like Chandler's, maybe you're going to like mine too. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, I, I'm mom of two boys. I have an eight-year-old and... Um, uh, and I and and the six is six year old and uh, you know they're both very active and they love to learn like all kids. So I've taught them things and they have taught me some coding that you 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 might be surprised a little bit about it. But so I'll talk about them. Um, and uh, what I do I do? I've been working with C plus plus for almost 15, 14, 15 years and uh, I've been mostly like a Backend developer, uh, so you know, I, I there are a lot of things that are happening in C plus plus that I don't work with uh, on day to day works. Uh, but anyway, so that's a little bit about me. What I like to do in this meeting is to hopefully encourage you guys to uh, code with kids and uh, tell you a little bit about like what to expect when you code with kids. Um, and then give you some ideas on how to start. And, you know, some of the things I'm going to say, they are very well known. So I'm going to, I have them on a slide, but I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, so we'll see. And then, like, like I said, there are a few things that just kind of surprised me. And I'm going to tell you so that, I don't know, maybe it helps us some way. Um, so one thing I want to say is that uh, please, feel free to, you know, it's, it's going to be a short and sweet uh, talk. So definitely if there's anything that either you want to ask or you want to share with us or you have some experience that you want to tell us, definitely come to the microphone and uh, talk about it if we have a ton of time. Uh, yeah, and if I go too quickly and you find that, oh, I'm not giving you time to <laughs> say what you have in mind, just raise your hand. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll be quiet then. Um, all right, so these are my objectives. Um, so first I want to start with why bother coding with kids. They're going to grow up, they're going to learn, and that's totally cool. Uh, but one of the things that I found is kind of like motivating is that it just gives them a tool. It gives them a tool to express themselves. It's, uh, they get super excited about it when they can do something with it, but also it is just they find when they know they can do it, they find things that they are going to be doing it. Like, I find that this, it's going to even give them a method to do a little bit of art when they're not very artistic. So uh, just enabling them with a tool, that's one of the, uh, you know, one of the reasons. And it's going to give build them uh, some confidence for them because they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I did this. And... There are things that maybe other kids can't do, or there are things that I do, and then I have something visible to show other people. That's kind of like building their confidence, and I thought that's sort of helpful. Um, another thing is that they, uh, it's while trying to write simple code, it teaches them how to think logically. So it keeps it, it, it uh, teaches them to think about corner cases to think about uh, something that is, uh, you know, if and else, and sushis, and stuff like that, that of course they're going to learn eventually, but this is just a different way of teaching them uh, logical thinking. Um, and it's a bonding activity. It's something that we all enjoy. Uh, if they enjoy, and only if they enjoy, then, uh, you know, it's just some fun times to spend together. It's, uh, uh, there are times that they love to do some activities. I do it with them. I don't enjoy as much as they do. Uh, but this is something that I enjoy, and I spend a lot of time with them doing it. And yeah, I, I think it's just a bonding activity. Another reason is that in a lot of places, 
the schools are starting to do some level of coding uh, with kids as young as grade one, and that includes Ontario. Uh, so if they are good because you are supporting them, they're going to be good at a school. And again, it's build, going to build their confidence and that's all going to, you know, obviously uh, just uh, keep building up on top of each other. Um, so, and then, oh yeah, one other thing that I was going to say, and I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe I have a slide for it later, I don't remember. But uh, one thing I learned is that when I work with them, they think I can do everything because obviously I'm a programmer, right? They don't know I can't do a lot of things. And that makes me uh, go Google it, go try it, stay up nights when they're in a sleep to learn so that later I say, oh yeah, I know what, how to do this. Of course I know. Um, so that was the nice thing for me that uh, it kind of made me, gave me some motivation to learn things that I don't need to learn and maybe without them I didn't have any motivation to learn. Okay, so that's a little bit about uh, reasoning, like why we want to do this. Um, this is just a little bit of a screenshot from um, the <clears throat> Government of Ontario website that uh, they talk about like uh, grade one math and then within it they have very simple uh, logic there that you know the kids are supposed to say okay the tertiary is going to go from some sort of begin to an end and there's some obstacles what are the directions put the direction together and now let's play it out is he actually going to get where it is that's I guess the testing part um all right so now you might be wondering how early we can start i'm going to tell you a little bit about my observation that is not uh my recommendation is uh, just observations right and you know if you guys have any observations just feel free to uh, share it with us so i know that kids babies <laughs> one and a half year old babies they can handle touch a screen with a uh, intention of doing something with intention of turning off the call when mom is talking to uncle right with intention of finding the app that plays some sort of sign for them they intentionally can uh, uh, can do the touch screen thing and handle touch screen so that's kind of interesting um, is uh, um, three year old they can do some card games which I think they are intended to cheat to teach a little bit of coding um, I'll, I'll talk about that uh, in a bit a four year old that's when if they're interested, they may be able to start doing coding with blocks. Now, this is the code.org website, which I'm gonna talk about them a lot because I love this website. And then in their platform, four years old is like the age that they believe that, you know, kids can start learning something. Uh, so, uh, what else? A six year old, they can start typing um, although they are very slow and they make a lot of typos, but they can start typing and they are happy to do so as long as you you don't get frustrated, you don't get bored, they're happy to try it <laughs> because it's just something that they can show that, oh yeah, I can do it too. All right, a nine-year-old, they can do Python, they can do web development, they can search and... Uh, you know, read um, a Stack Overflow, that, that there's a ton of things that they can do. Um, yeah, all right. And then, yeah, this is, this is also another thing that regardless of how early, how young they are, they kind of have an idea of what they want to do. Maybe they can't do it, but they have a lot of ideas. And uh, obviously that means that you gotta be doing the coding, but yeah, they do have the ideas. Okay, so uh, I'll be talking sort of quickly on uh, how to start. What are the tools that you have here that you can use? And again, some of them are very um, well-known things. Uh, so under three, obviously, they may be very young 
to do anything. <laughs> but I just wanted to point out that there are so many apps that they are cause and effect, right? And some of the apps, maybe they are sort of like hinting that, okay, if you intend this, whatever effect happen, do this thing. And that's just a bit of cause and effect sort of apps that are there. Now, um, three and younger, and, 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 and I, I do have a lot of ages on a screen, but this is like, what I believe is the minimum age doesn't mean that a three-year-old is going to be happy to do this. Not everyone is going to grow the same. So just keep in mind that these numbers, they're just, it's just me. I, I just came up with these numbers. Um, okay, so there are a lot of uh, board games that is similar to that turtle thing that I showed. Uh, and uh, they, it's just that they're on a board, they're not on a screen, and there's some obstacle, there's some goals, and the goals are different based on the game, and they don't cost a lot, you know. You can just get them and, and then have them play and write their code, basically, in uh, those cards that they have. And then if you don't want to do that, or maybe those ones are getting a little bit too boring because they're all about directions and you want to do something else, just make your own. Uh, board game, just, you know, a bunch of directions. And one thing you can do is to maybe some of the directions are like one command and some of the directions are a combination of commands that they can reuse. So, you know, but their goal is that just have some cards that are going to be your commands and um, a goal and, uh, and some obstacles and stuff like that. Okay. All right, so... Uh, yeah, that's that. Now, when they're a little bit older, maybe five, maybe six, or something like that, I started doing with my kids uh, treasure hunts. So I would put some instructions on a paper throughout the house, and I would say, hey, um, you know, there is maybe your, um, maybe it is like, uh, is there egg hunting, right? Except that you don't have to find it exactly where it is. I'm going to tell you where it is uh, with these instructions. Follow these instructions and you're going to find your eggs or you're going to find your gift or whatever it is. Um, so that sort of started fun. And then they started uh, making these sort of treasure hunts instructions for me. Now, they should be old enough to be able to either write or draw something so that you, you know, they, they send a message to you. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought that that's a good method of uh, putting some um, thinking in terms of uh, how you want to make something happen, how you plan for it. And definitely when they are designing the treasure hunt, they have to test it themselves. So I like that. I get, I get them to test their code, basically. Um, and then they become kind of, uh, you know, obviously very creative because, like, the steps can be that mom has to uh, spin five times, and that's a loop. I tell them, okay, fine. Write me a loop. I'm going to uh, spin for you, like, five times or how many times as you want. So that becomes kind of fun. Uh, I do have a story here to tell you. Um, there was one time that my son said, hey, mom, I am making you a treasure hunt. Except when you find a command, uh, don't remove it. Put it where you find it. When you read it, put it back where you find it. Oh, okay, fine. And then he gave me the beginning. He said, go start from the upper level. You're going to see a hint. I said, okay, I'll go find. And my first hint is says that... Uh, Go all the way down to basement. You're going to find your second hint. I did that. Put the hint back where I found it. Went all the way back down and uh, picked up the second hint that was saying that go all the way back up to the uh, highest level. You're going to find your next step. And I'm like, oh, seriously? <laughs> is that what it is? Then before I go up, I hear him laughing, ha, 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 I put you on an inference loop, mom. <laughs> so, yes, that's, that's, honestly, that's on me. 
I should have told him <laughs> no raw loops. <laughs> if I teach him that, yes, don't use raw loops, he, I, it wouldn't have happened to me. Um, all right, so that's that. Now, um, there are other things that you don't necessarily have to explain to them. Just use them. And just like, um, you know, at regular language, you don't teach them the grammar. They just see and they use this, right? So maybe I let them eat three, uh, eat cubes of cheese and three, and that's it. They understand what it is. And then next time, they're going to do the almost similar thing. May I have three or two chocolates, right? So, and again, you don't need really have to explain everything that you understand. It's just that give them something uh, to use, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Now, these are sort of like the games that we play. Now, let's go uh, to a screen and things that we can actually, you know, we can <laughs> kind of call them coding. Uh, uh, so, yes, block-based coding. There are a lot of block-based coding that, as we talked, uh, they can start doing from uh, four years old, uh, almost. Um, I'll, 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 I'll go back to uh, block-based coding uh, in a bit. Uh, four and above, yeah, they, they can do that, and they can do a little bit more of that sort of thing, and uh, they can... Um, they can, when, when they learn some, when they're a little bit more comfortable with uh, writing these block codes, they can start doing some robotics, right? So that, that there are a lot of uh, toys out there that uh, they, you can basically connect them with some sort of uh, block-based code and, uh, you know, they, they can write the code and they can tell the robot what to do, like the difference between Imagine your robot or your car hitting a wall or getting close to a wall. Do you want it to try left? Do you want it to try right? Do you want it to go back in a step? What do you want to do? And normally these are predefined on toys, right? But when they get to define these simple steps, they just feel so much empowered, right? They just feel that, oh yeah, you know, I'm actually coding because I wrote this thing. My robot is doing that other thing. Now, they are quite a bit, uh, I mean, they, they can be um, a little bit expensive, but, I mean, I don't know. You, you can probably just uh, find some good ones that is uh, worth, uh, you know, investing in. The other one that I really liked, and there are so many of them, but the other one that I really liked is uh, a Snap Circuit. They have uh, sensors included for, say, uh, temperature or infrared and stuff like that. And, and I thought that those are pretty cool. Uh, six years and up, you can even do more things, a lot of things that uh, maybe you may be like wondering, okay, so this is just now opening the door for me and uh, I'm, you know, be, it's, it's more flexible. So that means that you have to be a little bit more creative in terms of what you need to do with this. Um, so, but, but I'll go back to some of these with a little bit more uh, detail. Uh, anything so far? Anyone wants to? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, definitely not cheap. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. I wish. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> uh, yes, but there is a knot there. See. Um, okay, so now, uh, in, in one other thing, in terms of like how to start, I think they, as it doesn't matter how young they are, as long as they can talk. They can learn new vocabulary and they can just use these new terminology in, in a way that you don't expect them, like in regular conversation, but just give them, introduce them. And instead of trying to make it simple for them, it doesn't matter. Everything's new to them. All sort of vocabulary is new to them. Just use that, whatever thing that you feel like uh, is something that they are going to be coding with. Just use that same vocabulary with them. 
Yeah, and they're just going to pick it up it's just really naturally and normally. They're just going to pick it up. Um, okay, a few examples of uh, of of some code, uh, some some block-based programming or, or coding, and uh, so uh, I'll talk about some of them in a little bit more details, but there are many, many cases, many, many different platforms. Uh, what are common things in, in, in these uh, platforms is that they do have blocks, they have groups of blocks, they have, uh, they have a way to define a behavior, define some sort of a stage so that they can see what is happening to define their background and uh, the you know the objects that they're be, they're going to be working with so it's just going to make it very easy like for example if they want to have a picture of themselves they can just upload it if they want to if they don't want to do it and they're just looking for a cat it's, it's there in their library so it's sort of nice some of them have debugging ability which i find really fascinating uh, some of them don't. Um, so before I talk about a Scratch, um, I want to talk about Code.org. This is a website that uh, I absolutely love. They've done such a fantastic job in designing content for kids. Uh, it's really age appropriate. It's they have put a lot of thought and a lot of uh, resources into these things. So I would say, particularly for kind of like younger kids go to this website um, uh, yeah even, even for older ones i would say it's still really good even honestly even for say um, a grown-up who is not maybe your mom who's maybe not very comfortable or, or maybe they have never done coding this is again a tool that uh, they can learn and just like kids is just a tool that they can express themselves with it um, so yeah, and again, many, many courses on this, just like, uh, th this website in particular, I like it because they, not only they've done their courses, um, amazingly, and it is free, uh, they also have some, uh, short videos, short and long videos about computer science. It's not just about coding, it's about like general topics in computer science, maybe just introducing some new uh, thinking to kids. They talk about uh, coding-based practices. They talk about like uh, how to do uh, pair programming efficiently and stuff like that. So I thought this is, this is just fantastic. Um, they do same sort of uh, thing that uh, Scratch does <clears throat> with some blocks and you know, stamps and stuff like that. But one other thing is that they also show the code behind uh, all these blocks. So as the kids start growing and maybe they are more curious how the code looks like, uh, they can just click and see, or maybe actually you are curious how this is done, or maybe you want to do some more adjustments to uh, what they have provided. You, know, you can just look at this. Uh, same website. They have uh, they have ways for teenagers and uh, some, some older kids that if they want to build some app uh, to do it with kind of like blocks, these are really more like commands maybe, but they are putting them in the block that uh, it's easy to uh, just, you know, drag them, make your code and, uh, you know, change them a little bit. So it's a little bit closer to real coding, but uh, it's, it's a self kind of uh, block. And again, they have um, their real code. They can, you, they can see the real code behind it, and they can even have like version control. Wow, it's kind of nice. OK, so I like this website so much that this could be the end of my talk. Like I can say, all right, that's all you need to do. Bye. Uh, but I do have a few more things to say. Uh, all right, so what, what do I say? About a Scratch, I don't want to talk a ton about a Scratch, but uh, a few things is that one of the things, so I like Code.org more than a Scratch. My kids like a Scratch more than Code.org. 
And the reason is that uh, in the first page, when in, in the landing page of the uh, scratch, there are a lot of projects that are shared publicly and they can go look at them and then they can uh, update those uh, projects. So they can see the code that is inside it uh, and change it however way they want to do it. So that is actually a good, uh, you know, a good future, I would say, because reading code is still good and being able to work with someone else's code is still good. Those are, uh, I would say, the plus sides of it. But one uh, thing that I would like to just warn you about it is that a lot of these projects that people share, these are not from kids. These are from grown-ups and they have an agenda behind it. And some of them are just very immature, sort of like cartoons. And then there are times that I think my kids are coding, but they're actually just watching some videos on a scratch so, um, or, or playing some games on a scratch. So th that's fine to some degree. Um, but again, depending on the contents, you, you want to know that they're, they're not always appropriate for their age or uh, for uh, what sort of activities that they're doing. Um, All right, uh, next thing, and this is going to be the last thing I'm going to say about Scratch. I don't know if you have noticed or not, but you can have add-ons on a Scratch. There are some that are uh, available on the website, and you can say, okay, I want to do maybe with, uh, you know, a, a Lego device, EV3, or I want to do with some other device. Or um, So there, there are a lot of uh, add-ons, which is kind of nice. And there are even other websites, independent websites, that they write uh, for... They write some add-ons for a scratch, so that's sort of nice too. Uh, so the other one is Microsoft's Make Code. They have uh, lots of again uh, good material for training kids. They have templates. Um, one important thing here is that if your kid is in uh, Minecraft, uh, you know they. They, they can do coding in here. So this is this is a website that provides coding for Minecraft. And uh, again, a lot of kids like Minecraft. It's just another excuse to get them to code something. Um, so this is, again, some of the projects and tutorials that uh, uh, Microsoft has. And, and these are good, too. Um, Google has something similar as well. I, I don't think I have a slice for that. Okay, machine learning. There is an amazing platform for machine learning for kids. It is called uh, Machine Learning for Kids, basically. Uh, so uh, they, they teach basics of machine learning, uh, and they provide a way for kids to, uh, you know, model, uh, to create some models. Like you, they can... They can just uh, train, train a model and then use it in, um, use it in a scratch. Even even if they don't use it in a scratch, it's still kind of fun that you maybe train them for some words in a different language and then try to match it with English and then see what it does. Even though it doesn't always work fine, but it's still kind of. I find this I'm using for myself uh, to train a model simply and then uh, stick it into Minecraft and see, uh, not, not Minecraft, sorry, uh, a Scratch and see uh, what it does. Uh, one of their projects with which they uh, sort of, uh, I, I guess, uh, talk about it quite a bit in their website is that they have a model that can predict. Oh, they, they do have pre-trained models that you can just use. But they have one of these is uh, something that uh, finds which word is an inappropriate word. So if someone is typing something and they use a bad word, it's just going to eat. Then you get to decide what you want to do with that word. Do you want to replace it with something else? Do you want to do a star, a star? What do you want to do? So that's, yeah, that's an example. All right, now I want to talk about some coding that is uh, typing, but it's again super simple and super fun to do. 
Uh, this is an example that we tried quite a bit with my kids, and uh, they loved it. I liked it a lot. It doesn't have debugging, unfortunately, but it's super easy to share and super easy to get started on it. Uh, again, very similar to the bef before ideas, like they have libraries of uh, pictures and backgrounds and sounds, and you just put them together and with, with some very uh, easy to use uh, functions that, you know, all kids want to explode something, right? So they have a function to explode that, you know, that sort of thing. Um, this is a subscription, so if you want to, uh, you know, get them to work on something, it's, I think it's a monthly subscription, so it's going to come to your house, and they have a lot of interesting, I mean, this one is well designed too, but it's, again, like I said, it's once a month it comes in. On, your, on their website, you can do a lot of other things uh, with it. So let me go back to this. So let me go back to this code. All right, so now I'll show you if I can. Do I have this code ready? I don't know. Oh, it's not showing up. All right, that's fine. I was going to show something very similar to this, but much sweeter than what's on the screen. But that's fine. It's not showing up. <laughs> um, okay. So what do I have? Uh, Yes, there are other kind of a coding languages that is typing and is designed for kids and similar to Bitsfax. I haven't tried those, but I, I know they exist. So anyways, if you want to try them, you can do your own research and see which one seems uh, uh, better designed. Okay. Now again, it, this, this one requires typing, so it, it might be a little bit hard for little little, little kids. Um, but when they are comfortable with coding and with, with typing and they're a little bit older, they can definitely start with some real languages that we use and, um, you know, they can. It's just that make sure there is something that has easy interface, right? So they can put on the interface because if they get frustrated with the interface, they're not going to be interested to continue with it. Um, and then when it gets to, uh, you know, web development, Python and stuff, it can be a little bit harder for them to pursue it on their own. So that means that you guys have to spend a more regular time with them. Um, it's not like, okay, maybe I teach them a little bit and they're going to do their own thing. This, this requires more time from you, but um, obviously it is uh, rewarding for them. Uh, okay. Now, what do we want to code with them, right? So I thought that I'll give you some examples of what things you can do. I found that, you know, just writing super simple code in different languages is, uh, is eye-opening for them. Like knowing that there are so many ways to do a thing or different ways of achieving same thing, that was sort of, uh, that was really exciting for uh, my older son, my younger one, he is uh, still too young uh, to do that. Uh, but, and also they kind of learn what's out there, right? Even though they're not going to be, um, you know, a Python programmer and a C Sharp programmer and a web developer all at nine, they're just going to see that things, there, there, are, there are different languages out there and they can do a little bit, uh, you know, they, uh, depending on the, what they want to do, they can choose their, Tool. And this is where I had to learn a lot because there's a lot of languages that I don't know anything about. And I, that was my motivation. Okay, I'll go learn a little bit enough to say hello world, enough to do something pop up and, and that sort of thing, which was kind of nice for me uh, to see that I can do that. I have um, another story for you. There was once that I was, uh, um, I was going to get something in, in uh, I don't know, some sort of fast food. And in front of me, there were two uh, kids, like high school kids, uh, talking about summer job. And one of them was saying that I have n no problem getting a job. I know I'm going to get a job as soon as I want because I know three languages already. I know C, I know C+, and I know C++. So <laughs> I'm going to be able to get a job quickly. 
I'm like, yeah, sure. Okay, good. <laughs> so I, yeah, I hope that my son never claims that he knows C++. <laughs> um, all right, so now what to code? First of all, there are a lot of books in all these sort of languages that I talked about that gives you some ideas like what to do. But you don't need to invest on those uh, necessarily. You have your own ideas. I would say a start with super simple uh, games. Uh, you know, just, just come up with something like um, a character. You touch them and it's going to fart. Or, you know, they can be... Uh, things that you touch and it's going to make fireworks. And that's something that the one and a half year old would love to try. And just imagine your six year old making an app that the one and a half year old is going to love to play with. How proud that six year old is going to be, right? Um, free stamps. And another simple idea, a simple puzzle. They can, they can do it. Um, you know, some aliens moving around and they get to shoot it. It's just something that they can code themselves and they can say, oh, I programmed the game and uh, they play with it. Um, yeah, one, one other story. Sorry, I have too many stories, I guess. Uh, there was this uh, code that we did with my son, which was the aliens and they're flying around and he needs to shoot them. And it just was a little bit... After he coded it, we coded it together. Honestly, it was quite a bit of work. Uh, he started playing with it, and he was like, oh, it's so hard to get these aliens. It's just so and so fast. And then I went around and did my own thing and came back, and I saw that, oh, now he's getting all the aliens. I'm like, okay, oh, that's nice. Looks like you're getting better at this. And I was like, oh, no, I just went to the code and make the aliens slower. Like, yeah. His, he knows how to code, right? Um, greeting cards. Uh, they love to make greeting cards, right? Their personalized message, their personalized character, uh, the, uh, the, the sound that it makes, and uh, how funny it is, how serious it is. It's just amazing what things they can do. Um, and then what else? Yeah, you, you can do some you know, day to day things like um, a counter, uh, the to-do list and stuff like that. Definitely, there, there are a lot of things, simple things that you can do. And as they get better, uh, you know, they are going to come up with ideas. They are going to tell you what they want to code. And there are chances that you're going to be the coder. They're just going to tell you what to do. They're more like manager. But eventually, they'll get there too. Um, yeah, another thing I would say is that sometimes they're talking about something, especially I think at the beginning that they still don't know what things they can do. They're like talking about something and it's it can be you if you are listening well, it can be you that say, hey, by the way, that sounds like a good app. Do you want to program it together like in the weekend, right? There are times that they're just talking about, oh, I want to do this or do you know how to do that? And that's how... Uh, yeah, that's how their next app is going to be. All right. Um, now, what if they're not interested, right? Um, what if you try, you are a coder, and maybe everyone in the family is a coder, but someone else, or, or maybe it's just not in your family. Maybe maybe you're the uncle of uh, someone, a kid that you love. Or uh, So what about that? So first of all, I would say, fine, not, not everyone needs to be a coder, that's fine, give it, give it a try, and if they don't want it, then that's fine. We still need doctors and chefs, and, and we need artists, so okay, that's fine, they're not. Um, but another thing is that just maybe teach them enough that they can make, uh, they don't have to break apps, but they can make their greeting card. They can make just, you know, um, some sort of abstract art. I've seen uh, in, in, on, on, on uh, a Scratch, there are some sort of like mesmerizing arts, like colors and uh, sound. It's just like, wow, I like it. It's a tiny bit of code, maybe a little bit more than a tiny bit, but it's still, it's not, it doesn't take that much to create that. You would think that maybe making, uh, maybe you need a lot of 
very professional tools to do some uh, sort of videos, but yeah, they're, they're okay. They're, they, can, they can just learn enough to, uh, yeah, to do a little bit of art maybe. And then you might want to try doing some robots. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't sound like a lot of coding. It doesn't sound like they have to come up with ideas. They have to stay on computer for hours. It's just give them, you know, uh, a reason to code and, and uh, have fun with it. Um, one of the things I would say that don't entirely give up on them coding, again, don't push them, but don't entirely give up on them, is because the school still expects them to do a little bit of coding. It's because I feel like maybe we don't expect the kids, but over time, I feel like the age that people are expected to do some coding is decreasing. So um, again, definitely not sex, but maybe at 15, they're expected to know a little bit of coding. So you might just help them with that. Um, yeah. All right. So now a few things to just um, warn you about. When they start typing, they're going to be slow, very, very slow. Um, don't try to type for them. Give them time to type. And if they want you to type for them, don't say that, no, 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 this is your job. You're coding. You type it. it it's fine. Just let them lead. If they want you to type or if they want to type, that's fine. The typing, how slow they are and how they're like looking. Okay, L here. That just drives me crazy sometimes, but okay, that, that's what it takes. Um, Sometimes they start a project and then they're not interested in it. That's okay. They can quit their project. Um, and then sometimes they start a project and you end up doing most of the projects. That's okay too. Just so then you know that you're going to be do, doing a lot of coding. Um, and then sometimes they have some ideas that just doesn't make sense. Just doesn't make sense. Why do you want to do that? But again, that's fine. Just as long as... Maybe when they get older, you want to talk a little bit about ideas and don't waste a lot of your time on, or, or your hope on something that, you know, is going to fail. Uh, another thing that I found is very difficult for kids is, under, well, for younger kids, is just understanding that what is X and Y. What do you mean that I want to put my uh, hippo here? Why can't I put it here? Well, okay, these are the numbers. Why do you have to change these numbers? They, I, I find it like kids... Just couldn't get it. Well, I mean, it took it took a long time to get it. Um, all right. So another thing is that while you are programming with them, uh, it's just a good time if they are interested. Again, this is this is more for kids who like to do it and they are sort of like proud to do it. Just start teaching them a little bit more about like you know um, what are the right ways of coding. Like you don't want to give it a good variable name and stuff like that, or don't copy paste and, you know, things that, you know, just, but I would say that it's, they, they listen, that's the age that they listen, maybe. Uh, and, and most of these uh, websites, they have a way for them to make uh, blocks of code functions. So teach them how to use those things. Mm. All right, uh, what else? Um, so I don't know if I can play this video or not. I'm gonna give it a try. If not, then it might help. People confuse programming with coding. Coding is to programming what typing is to writing. Writing is something that involves mental effort. You're thinking about what you're going to say. The words have some importance, but in some sense that even they are secondary to the ideas. In the same way, programs are built on ideas. They have to do something. And what they're supposed to do, I mean, is like what writing is supposed to convey. If people are trying to learn programming by being taught to code, well, they're being taught writing by being taught how to type. And that doesn't make much sense. I just want to point out that maybe terminology is a little bit different. Uh, on the talk that we had, we were, you know, maybe programming was used in a, for some short-term uh, 
uh, coding and here they're using coding for short term and programming for long term. And I think it's just that I, when I had the talk, I was like, oh, yeah, it's just different. We're not consistently using it. But I think the idea is the same. You, you, you get what I mean. Just teaching them how to code is not a guarantee to make them successful. It's not a guarantee that they are going to be uh, a coder. It's, uh, yeah. I, I thought that this this was a good point. I'm sort of like relevant to what we heard before. Um, all right. And then another thing is that when they are old enough that they know how to Google things, they know how to find out their this to solve their problem without coming to you, right? Then it starts kind of getting interesting because a they're gonna start talking about things that maybe you've never heard about it, and they're like, if you're like me, I'm like, oh. Really? You can do that? Um, so that's that's not too bad. It's kind of interesting, but not too bad. Um, and then uh, they they may start learning things that you don't necessarily want them to learn. Maybe they're just too young to understand how to use uh, those sort of things. Um, yeah, one of the things that my son does is that, and it's super simple, but oh my God, he's been doing it for the last two years. He just writes a few lines of code in different languages that uh, there is a button. The button says, don't click me. And there's nothing else to do. So you click it. And then a ton of things pops up. Uh, I told you don't click me. And then it's just annoying. And he still likes it. Uh, so OK, fine. Um, then they may learn things that aren't quite correct way to do things. They may uh, see some bad language. They may see some. Uh, mean comments or wrong language to use that you don't want to, you don't want them to use. So just be maybe um, mindful about it. That when they are at that age, you may want to start just preparing them that not everything that you see on the internet is the right tool, and you don't want to always use those sort of things. Um, and then just give them. Just be proactive. Maybe give them better resources, things that they can go to it and they can, uh, you know, they, and you're not, you're, you're comfortable with it, right? Uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, I was doing this uh, slide and my son saw it and he says like, oh yeah, um, Scratch has a, a Scratch Wiki. I think it's a very good resource. You should tell them. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so there are good resources for Scratch and all these languages as well, but they're also not so good resources. All right, so this is now my biggest fear. And I'm just going to tell you what my fear is. I have absolutely no solution for it. I'm just going to share with you what I think. Um, so talking about wrongdoing, there are a lot of things that kids can do. And they may not know it is wrong. They may think it's cool. They may think that, oh, I'm so good. No one's going to catch me. Or um, they may think that, like maybe teenagers, I'm, I'm worried that what if, you know, what if they say that, oh yeah, I'm doing this because I disagree with my government and I'm gonna do this wrongdoing because I can and I, I'm doing it for the good of society. Like, what am I going to do, right? Am I ready to know when he's ready to do things that uh, aren't quite the right thing to do? So th this is like one of my worst nightmares. I, I know actually someone who is a brilliant guy, very, very nice guy. I, I doing everything right, but he he actually met FBI at the age of 16. Like, woo, how did you manage to do that? He wasn't comfortable to share <laughs> the story with me, and that's perfectly fine. But I don't want my son and your son to be someone who meets FBI in, at the age of 16. And I don't, I don't know how to make sure that this is, is not going to happen, except just continuously talk about what is right, what is wrong, what is OK to do, either from language or from um, you know, coding practices or from what is the goal of your activity. Uh, so I, there, is, there is another story that I have, which is, again, kind of a scary. And, they don't even need to be 16 to do that. Even at the age of eight and uh, nine, they can. Um, you know how easy it is to change uh, 
sign up like a front page code, right? They have a website. Imagine it is uh, their test. A lot of tests th these days are online. The teacher goes to their uh, computer. Oh, you did it? 100%. Awesome. In five minutes. Good job. And they have absolutely no idea, right? So how would I make sure that that's not going to be my son? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys have some ideas, but yes, that's another thing to just keep in mind that we are giving them a very a strong tool. What are they going to do with this? So thank you. So in terms of a screen time, that's a very good question. Uh, before COVID, everyone was that, oh dear, if you let your kid to be on a screen like for two hours, what kind of a parent you are? And then COVID started and they're doing eight hours of a screen for school, right? Either they're on doing a school or they're doing activities for a school, after a school. So kind of like that mindset of how many hours has been, um, I, I, don't, I don't know what, people do now. Uh, but uh, for me personally, I would say I limit their activities, like activities on watching just some video, uh, playing Minecraft that has its own time, coding has some time, and uh, playing chess. My kids are into chess. They, that has its own time. Um, so it, it, it adds up, but I'm okay with it. Uh, and, and then you had, sorry, another question. I, uh, oh, that was the okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, good presentation. I hope that the slides are uh, available. Thank you. Um, so basically, how do you, uh, I want to know your experience where basically you're, you're using a tool and you want, just want to, to, let, uh, to uh, teach them simple programming stuff, uh, let's just say programming at the dice, but then suddenly they want to, to add an interface and now you're trying to, to teach them at the same time how to do some callbacks, etc. So when do you separate, how, how do you manage, how, what is your experience where you're trying to do just a little bit of thing and then because uh -huh. of the tools you have to do to learn at the same time everything else? Yes, that, that's a good question. That's why I, I, I really recommend doing these Kato's languages and code.org, you can write actual code without uh, worrying about the screen because they have all that boilerplate in place, mm -hmm. you can do that. That's one thing. There's another website that actually uh, takes the uh, a Scratch code. And uh, so a Scratch, if you want to make it an actual code, obviously there's a lot more happening, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes a Scratch code. It, I think, translates it to JavaScript and with all the boilerplates. So you basically get the same thing as long as you can do it on a Scratch. It, uh, I think it's called, uh, what is it called? Mm. Maybe low part, maybe. Uh, but but I, I'm pretty sure if you go get it, you're, you're going to find it. Uh, yeah. But you, you're right. It, it's kind of boring, actually, for them because they have to wait for you to set up everything. Uh, that's another thing that you can do. Just set it up before and just focus on the logic that is going to be yeah. happening. You know, that That's something that I had to do, you know, just... Okay, or it, yeah. it can be two different sessions, let's say one for the for the coding and the other. If for you the want to part. if you want them to do the everything, then yes, definitely break it down. Not just two sessions, it, it could yeah, be yeah. five weeks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No yeah, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Um, so I have you know four kids at home and I've never tried to kind of push programming on them, but you know, try to get them interested. One thing I've struggled with is frequency and duration. Like, how do you like how do you balance? You know, because obviously programming requires quite a bit of time. So, how do you balance? Uh, you know, when you do programming and how long you do it with um, your kids. Right. Uh, good question. I would say I, I personally let my kids lead. Uh, 
there are times that I'm like, okay, I had two hours with you. I'm done. I'm going to go if, even if you want to stay here. But uh, I, I, would, I would recommend never just, you know, pushing them or try, if it's not coming from them. Although knowing that they can do this, that should come from you. But then once they know that they can do simple programming, then, then uh, I would say just let them lead. Uh, if they want to, if they want to do more, or if they want to do less, because when we ask them to do more coding and they don't want to, they might feel like they are disappointing us. Like they know what you do, they know this is your life, coding, and if they see that, oh, I don't want to do this, um, this this can be kind of like a burden on on them and on their feelings, maybe.